Joining us now, the third-ranking Democrat in the U.S. House of Representatives, Majority Whip Jim Clyburn. He currently serves as chairman of the House Select Committee on Coronavirus Crisis and has just been selected to co-chair President-elect Joe Biden's presidential inaugural committee. Uh, it's great to have you on the show. We have so many questions for you. Let's start with inauguration in the age of coronavirus and not exactly knowing exactly if President Trump will leave the White House or where he will be or even if he will attend. He says he won't. What is inauguration going to look like, Jim? Well, thank you very much for having me, first of all. Well, look, we know what we're in. Uh, Joe Biden has made it very clear uh, that he is going to lead by precept and example. And so we will uh, be setting an example uh, with this inauguration. Uh, it is going to be uh, what we might call a hybrid. Uh, he'll take the oath uh, in a traditional way, but all of the inaugural festivities are, are going to be 80% uh, what we call virtual. Uh, so that's what it's going to be like. And I think the American people, especially those who looked in on our convention, uh, saw uh, what kind of uh, connections could be made virtually. I thought the convention went extremely well, and that's what we're going to do here, run this pretty much like we did uh, our national convention. Congressman, it's Willie. It's good to see you this morning. President-elect Biden's position on this uh, transfer of power has been, look, I don't really personally care if, if President Trump is there, but I do care for the sake of the country to show a smooth transfer of power and to remind people that this is how we do things in a democracy. Do you think it's important that President Trump be there to hand over the reins of power to Joe Biden? Well, I don't know uh, how important that is. I do believe this, though. Uh, that the American people believe in a peaceful transfer. Now, does he have to be there? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, should he be there? Yes. But this is not the only thing that this president should do that he has not done. Uh, but the country still functions. Uh, all uh, of our democratic uh, institutions are holding. And I think that we will have that tradition uh, do the same. So the president can participate uh, if, if he cares to, but if he doesn't, uh, this country will move on without him. I know you're still planning this out, Congressman. You've got just over a month or so until January 20th. Uh, but will we see, for example, President-elect Biden on the west front of the Capitol for the swearing in? Have you figured out how that's going to happen? We've not figured out exactly how it's going to happen, but I see construction workers back here is right down yeah. below my window here, uh, and so I can see them at work. Uh, so I would suppose that um, uh, he will take the oath uh, in a traditional fashion. We can do that mm -hmm. while socially distancing, uh, but uh, the other stuff, uh, the luncheon afterwards, probably won't take place, as well as the festivities uh, of the evening will probably be dispersed out among the 50 states. Uh, and five or six territories. All right. Uh, and before you go, tell us about the bill you, you just introduced to give black World War II vets full GI Bill benefits. Well, thank you very much for that question. I hope that people who hear about this legislation will do me a favor and look up Sergeant Isaac Woodard from South Carolina. There's a great book written about Sergeant Woodard by Richard Gurgle, a federal judge down in South Carolina, it was Willard, uh, the, his experiences that led Truman to integrate the armed services, led uh, Judge J. Wittes Wary uh, to write the opinion he did uh, in what led to Brown v. Board of Education. This man was blinded by police officers while he was in his uniform returning home from World War II. And Sergeant uh, J., uh, Joseph Maddox uh, up in uh, uh, Massachusetts, uh, um, that sergeant was denied services coming back uh, from World War II, uh, was accepted into Harvard, and was not given veteran benefits. So we have decided uh, to honor these two sergeants uh, who gave so much uh, to help this country be what it is today by putting forth this legislation to give those benefits uh, to uh, those uh, veterans their children, grandchildren, and other descendants 
uh, the same thing that their fellow white soldiers got when they came back from World War II and black soldiers never got. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.